This is part two of my three-part e-bike riding series in Borrego Springs. Now, if you recall, we ended up part one with me arriving in Borrego, uh, Borrego Springs a little later in the afternoon, but anxious to get a ride in and see some of the sights. Now, since the desert sculptures were about seven to eight miles away from where I was staying, I figured that'd be a simple 45 minute ride to get in both a bike ride and see some of the, the desert sculptures. So I figured I'd spend about a half hour out there at the sculptures and then a nice easy 45 minute ride back to my place. A couple of things I hadn't taken into consideration was first of all, out there in the desert, it gets just pitch dark around a quarter to five and there's no lights out there. The other thing I didn't uh, really consider was how much fun I was gonna be having out there looking at all of the sculptures. So by the time I started to head back, it was already getting dark and really cold. And because I was so anxious to get out of there and thought it was going to be just a simple hour and a half little ride, I didn't come prepared. I didn't bring any of my uh, night riding lights. I didn't dress warmly or anything like that, which is kind of crazy because I always do. But I was so anxious to get going that I just took off. I didn't even realize that I had missed my turnoff until I looked down at my monitor and saw that I had gone 12 miles on the return leg of my trip. I knew that I had messed up bad. And at this point, I really had no idea where I was at. So I came across this little convenience store and I went in to ask for directions. When I talked to the young person at the counter, uh, he said, yeah, sure, I know where that place is, and I can give you uh, directions, old timer. Now, I never considered myself an old timer, but I guess he meant it as a term of endearment. Now, I don't know if he really knew directions or not. It sounded like he did, or if it was the fact I just couldn't see the street signs. Because he said, go down the road about four miles, turn right at such and such a street, and then left at such and such a street. Well... I thought, great, now I know where I'm at. So I headed out on the road, and after about six or seven miles, I realized I had passed up any chance of finding the roads that he said I was supposed to find. So I resorted to asking the GPS lady on the phone where the heck I was. You were 45 minutes from your destination by bicycle. In one half mile, turn right. Now, the lady on the GPS was good at getting me directions, but she gave me the shortest route to get back there, not the best route. And the route that she gave me was on all of these back roads and back streets that had absolutely no lights. And it just got so pitch dark, I couldn't even see the edge of the road, which was on these back roads, had about a six or eight inch drop off and then it was just soft sand on the shoulder. Plus, on these back roads, the edge of the road was not marked. There was no white stripe, and I just couldn't see it. So I ended up driving down the middle of the road, following the white line best I could, and relying on cars that came by for a momentary glimpse of where the road was. I couldn't even see sometimes when uh, it was, I was supposed to be making a left or a right hand turn, I would go right through the intersection and not even see the side streets. I think it got so bad that the GPS lady, Siri, got really frustrated with me and kind of was giving up on me. Hey dummy, you're lost. You missed your turn. Now turn around. 
Somehow, I don't know how, but I did find my place. And as I was pulling up to it, I was so glad that the door had a lighted combination lock to get in because there's no way I would have been able to find the key slot. Once I was inside, uh, the first thing I did was, well, of course, put the bike away, and then I made a hot cup of cocoa and turned on the nice fireplace that they had in the place. So like usual on things like this, it just turns into be a, a good story to tell. Fortunately though, I was on pavement, you know, where there was some traffic because if I was out on those dirt roads I I don't know I don't think I would have made it back absolutely no lights pitch dark freezing cold I don't know stay tuned for part three we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take some more awesome riding in Borrego Springs and we're gonna see all kinds of the uh, we're gonna go in more a little more in depth on the on the sculptures out there and uh, gosh they're just all over the place I think there's like 50 or 60 of them out there so stay tuned for part three of the three-part series. 